Celebrity Roast, coming to you from the MGM Grand Hotel in the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. The glittering city of excitement and laughter provides the scintillating backdrop for tonight's star-studded roast. From the Ziegfeld Room of the Grand Hotel, some of the world's greatest entertainers are here tonight. They are in Las Vegas in person as the Dean Martin Show honors our man of the hour. And tonight, guess what? It's going to be Dean with tonight's guest, Bob Hope, Orson Welles, Jimmy Stewart, Dean Kelly, John Wayne, Muhammad Ali, Dee Kaplan, Tony Orlando, Howard Cosell, Dan Ron and Dick Martin, Senator Barry Goldwater, Joe Namath, Rich Little, Angie Dickinson, Joey Bishop, Senator Hubert Humphrey, Foster Brooks, Paul Lynn, Georgia Engel, Dixie Russell, and our special guest roastmaster, Don Rickles. And here he is, our man of the hour, Dean Martin. Great thrill for me, really, tonight to be master ceremonies. This is one of the great all-time thrills I've ever had. I, uh, this is a bigger thrill than watching Pat Boone autograph hockey pucks during the ice follies. <laughs> My wife Barbara summed it up best uh, earlier this evening. She said to me, uh, she said, uh, really, I think that's the way my wife talks. It's going to be an exciting evening. <laughs> but don't go by her. She said that on our wedding night. <laughs> My wife told me to be polite this evening. By the way, she'd be with us tonight, my lovely wife, Barbara, but unfortunately, she swam in our pool today with her jewelry on and drowned. <laughs> tonight, we are honoring our man of the hour, <laughs> Dean Martin. You heard the applause, Dean, I'd worry. <laughs> Can you imagine him, huh? Can you imagine him if he was in the infantry in World War II? Attack! Oh, I'm gonna go lay down first. <laughs> and so, uh, who are we honoring tonight? A man who has trouble finding his legs. <laughs> this is quite a day. I haven't seen so many tuxedos since the Osmond brothers had their annual prom. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful, Dean? Look at all these beautiful people here to pay tribute to you. The Senator, Rich Little, Paul Lind on the end. Paul, if you want to order, do it now. The kitchen's going to close. <laughs> Sorry about your seat, Paul. Why don't you get a pillow so you can see us? <laughs> what an exciting night, folks. You can't believe it. I have chills. Just looking around, seeing all these people. Senator Goldwater. Sorry about the election. <laughs> So close. You could have been the president. We could have hung out together. Gee, <laughs> how you feel, Bob? Spoke to the Texaco company. You're going to blow up Thursday. <laughs> Bless you, Bob. Keep that image. They don't know at home you run around in your underwear going, Where's Dolores? <laughs> you remember Dolores, the missus? Uh, Jimmy? I spoke to the family. You're doing well. <laughs> You're doing well, Jimmy. I spoke to the wife. She's leaving you. <laughs> Let it out, Wilson. Let it ride off. Wilson's <laughs> mopey dick. Water comes out of his navel. <laughs> we have a wonderful night. We're going to honor Dean Martin, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, He's a great man. Uh, uh. Dean has passed away about three years ago, I believe. <laughs> Mohammed, if you get a chance, could you watch me? <laughs> no, he's a great champion. I remember when you fought your last fight, you stood in the corner and said, I'm winning. <laughs> hey, listen, it's, it's such a great, uh, great thing to see all these wonderful guests, Dean, to see Howard Cosell. And, and I'll tell you, Howard, from the bottom of my heart, you can't even tell. It's perfect. <laughs> 
Mr. Senator, I laughed at you when you lost. <laughs> He just went, I am from Minnesota. Let's have a party. <laughs> He's like kids, Mr. Senator. You know how much you love. Look at the seat you got. <laughs> Later on, the senators do back in Arizona to stand around on the highway going, look at that, a car. <laughs> I kid you, Senator, but what are I respect you? Jimmy, I respect him. <laughs> Good to see Angie Dickinson sitting next to Joe Namath. When I blow the whistle, yell hike. Anyway, Jimmy, morning. Last night he fell into his own pants. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of reasons why we should honor this man tonight. First of all, he's Italian, and I love the Italian people. I'll never forget the word of Carmine Gangananzo, who said to me in Brooklyn on a Saturday night. <laughs> Marchese Papanini, un gazzano alfano cupazzo, stuttanini undanini gondalano. Look at this, I'm making up names in Goldwater's writing them down. People can work you over. Italians are fantastic people, really. They can work you over in an alley while singing an opera. You ever watch them? <laughs> I got an album. <laughs> Dean, do you understand any of this? If you do, blink twice. If you don't blink three times, we'll let you go to the toy toy. But it's your night, boy. It's your big night. And I'm perspiring. I'm getting malaria. <laughs> A Japanese guy went, oh, goody, goody. <laughs> Orson Welles, uh, ladies and gentlemen, has been a great star for so many years. Uh, this man was married to a great many women in his life. They're all flat now. <laughs> But this is a great creative talent. I cannot say enough about him. I will not embarrass him. I've made jokes about him because I've always believed when you're important, uh, that is my belief in life, when you're important, uh, you're certainly open to ridicule and fun, and criticism. This man is open mostly to fun, certainly not ridicule. He's a fantastic artist. And I have never had the pleasure personally until tonight when I leaned over and I said, Mr. Wells, I'm Don Rickles. And he said, who cares? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Orson Welles. Thank you, Donald, for that well-meant but rather pedestrian introduction. <laughs> Regarding yourself, I quote from the third part of Shakespeare's Henry VI, Act Two, Scene One. Richard speaks, Where thy heart is hard as steel, as thou hast shown it flinty by thy deeds, I come to pierce it or to give thee mine, to translate into your own idiom, Donald, you're a yo-yo. <laughs> I direct my remarks to Dean Martin, who is being honored here tonight for reasons that completely elude me. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm not being fair to Dean because, no, this is true. In his way, Dean, and I know him very well, has the soul of a poet. I'm told that in his most famous song, Dean offers a lyric which is so romantic, so touching, that it will be enjoyed by generations of lovers until the end of time. Let's share it together. <laughs> when the moon hits your eye, <laughs> like a big pizza pie, that's a Morris. <laughs> now that's what I call touching, Dean. <laughs> it has all the romanticism of a tidy bowl commercial. <laughs> seems to shine 
like you have had too much wine. That's amore. What a profound thought. <laughs> Could be inscribed forever on a cocktail napkin. <laughs> See, say this more. Tippy, tippy, tip. Like a gay tarantella. Like a gay tarantella? <laughs> Apparently, Dean, there's a side view we know nothing about. <laughs> and the stars make you drool like a pastor's azul. Excuse me, but you see back in old Napoli, that's amore. No, Dean. Uh, that's infermo, Italian for sickening. <laughs> now, lyrics like that, lyrics like that ought to be issued with a warning. A song like that is hazardous to your health. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're now looking at the end result. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, rolling right along with our bombastic review, we have a great show for you tonight. A guy that I've seen on Hollywood Squares many, many times. Perry Como discovered this guy in Florida in a swamp sucking on a crocodile's neck. <laughs> He's a fantastic star. He's been in my dressing room many times going, I'm a fantastic star. <laughs> he just recently returned from Guam, where he was there waiting for the war to end. <laughs> the black guy went, I didn't know the war was still on. <laughs> and the Polish kid went, I did. <laughs> Great artist, Mr. Pauline. <laughs> so you're the man of the hour. <laughs> I can't tell you what a thrill it is to be here. The only thing I give this up for is being guest of honor at a flash flood. <laughs> I suppose I'm here because I did some of Dean's variety shows. They were television's first family hour if you happen to come from a broken family. <laughs> In case you're interested, Dean and I don't socialize very much. We, we have very different tastes. I prefer museums, gourmet cuisine, legitimate stage. Dean likes bocce ball. <laughs> Pizza. And the Pussycat Theater. <laughs> To him, an intellectual discussion is analyzing the plots of Gilligan's Island. <laughs> and when it comes to culture, forget it. When Dean went to the ballet and saw everyone up on their toes, you, you know what he said? <laughs> Why don't they just get taller girls? <laughs> I remember once going to a party at Dean's house. It was really quite unique. No, well, unique isn't exactly the word. The word is tacky. <laughs> First of all, he had me picked up in his private limousine, a $50,000 Mercedes Benz, with a plastic hula girl <laughs> hanging from the mirror. <laughs> you should have seen some of the people he had working at the party. It's the first time I'd ever seen valet car stripping. <laughs> Half the guests were outside writing down the numbers of police cars. <laughs> You can always judge a person by the paintings in his house. Well, the most tasteful picture I saw on Dean's wall was an unsigned seascape from the Good Times Motel. <laughs> and I got real lucky. Dean introduced me to some of his personal friends, Carmine, Benny, Big Louie, Nunzio, and Nails Della Rosa. <laughs> that was his creep. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to uh, meet a gentleman who has to get in training for the big football season that's coming up next year. He just finished a great year with the Jets. They finished the season. <laughs> One of the greatest quarterbacks of all time who set for the Jets. Hurry it up. I've got to meet this chicken about an hour. <laughs> they kid about Joe being looking for women and searching and wandering. He's now 32 years old, and he's tired of sitting and looking in the mirror going, hope this clears up. <laughs> Went to Alabama University, where all the broads went, hi, Joe, skippity-doo-dah. Skippity-day. I don't care what bus I ride, I'm gonna ride it today. They call him Broadway Joe. They can call him most anything under the sun. When the game starts, he's a champ. Joe Namath. Yeah, I really am glad to be here tonight. In fact, uh, after last season, I'm glad to be anywhere. <laughs> it was so rough last season, I may need another operation. Uh, they want to remove some cartilage from my left knee and mean Joe Green's helmet from my chest. <laughs> it was a rough, rough season. Actually, uh, I do have a selfish, selfish mode of being here tonight. I just found out that one of the major studios wants to make my life story as a movie. Really, the perfect one to play my part for my life is Dean Martin. I mean, why not? For years, I've been playing his. <laughs> <laughs> Dean would be perfect playing me. He, uh, he even has my characteristics. We're both broad-shouldered and broad-minded. <laughs> for the long bomb. Of course, Dean, he's been bombed for a long time. <laughs> Dean, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a great American, and I tell you, to run for President of the United States is indeed uh, one of the rarities of our life. Ladies and gentlemen, such a man is here tonight to honor Dean. We are all delighted. He is an American and a true one, the great Senator Barry Goldwater. Thank you, Don. I appreciate that round of applause. It seemed to create a little draft. <laughs> which uh, may be what my good friend Hubert has been waiting for. <laughs> you, uh, you may wonder why I stand here attempting to match wits with the likes of Bob Hope, Don Rickles, Paul Lind. It's unfair for me to compete with comedians. After all, I've had 19 years of comedy experience in the United States Senate. <laughs> I'm proud to list Dean Martin as a dear, close friend. And to show the depth of his friendship at my last re-election, Dean drank to my good health. He also drank to an armadillo. <laughs> now, when I arrived here in Las Vegas, Dean invited me to a party to meet some of his friends. And I'm sorry I had to turn down your offer, Dean. But lately, I've learned from the newspapers that if you're a politician, you'd better not get introduced to strangers by Italian singers. <laughs> this being an election year, I feel that it's healthy for our country to have as wide a choice of candidates as possible. What I'm suggesting, it's not too late for a new candidate. And for those who aren't gone on Ron or all aboard for Ford, I proudly offer a third choice, Dino's or Bambino. <laughs> yes, there's room in our political spectrum for the man of the hour. If not president, then maybe something even more important, a senator. <laughs> In these 
troubled times, the country needs candidates to look up to. And Dean, I suggest, is the perfect father figure. One might even say godfather figure. <laughs> My candidate is for full employment. Just consider what he's done for the farm workers. On martinis alone, he's kept 10,000 olive pickers in business. <laughs> My candidate believes in equal opportunity for women. He chooses all the gold diggers personally. To find out if they give off the right vibrations, he has the most unusual test. He taps each gold digger with a tuning fork leaving no stern untuned. <laughs> I told Earl Butts that joke wouldn't work. <laughs> We had a hundred like you in Washington. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have 10,000. A lot of your friends uh, throughout the country uh, couldn't be here at the MGM tonight. However, they sent uh, some telegrams, which I'm going to read. Dear Dean, you're the only man I know who falls down more than I do. Signed, President Ford. <laughs> Senator Goldwater went, not even funny. There's a telegram from General Franco, but we better not read that now. <laughs> from the Smithsonian Institute. Thank you for considering us for your future donation. But we have the livers of five dinosaurs that are in better condition than yours. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the next lovely star that I'm about to introduce is the star of Police Woman. I, I'm happily married. <laughs> I think of this lady often. I, I want to be with her so bad. <laughs> I love my wife, but my wife is ill. <laughs> She's a lovely star. She's known as Pepper Schmutzkadick, whatever her name is. <laughs> Pepper, Pepper Pock, whatever they call her. I, I never missed a show. I, I use it for a nightlight when I fool around with my wife. <laughs> a great show. Oh. <laughs> number four in the country, so you know how our country is going. <laughs> Hubert Humphrey went, is there something wrong with the country? <laughs> I went, forget about it, I had my shot. <laughs> so I'd like to bring on this girl. And when we bring her on, let's have the whole day as a tacker. The Policewoman is a, is a great show. Isn't it a great show, Orson? Great. You're in Spain. How would you know? <laughs> You're sitting around in Spain going, Olé! Olé! <laughs> sorry, Jimmy. I woke you up. I'm awfully sorry. <laughs> Jimmy was taking a quick nap, and we snapped him out. Anyway, uh, put you in a hot tub and watch your duck sink. <laughs> <laughs> Barry Goldwater went, Now it's starting to roll. <laughs> What am I bid for this broad before I introduce her? <laughs> Look at this, the old guy went, four dollars. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado in honor of our honored guest, our honored guest. Hurry up, of course, it's just too old to talk. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Andy Dickinson. delicatessen and bite into a tongue sandwich, Don. May it be your own tongue. <laughs> Dean, you know I've, I've been a long time fan of yours, even before Rio Bravo. And, uh... <laughs> 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 I, 
especially liked um, when you when you played um, Matt Helm, that dashing spy, or as we called you around the studio, James Bond. <laughs> You're so good as a detective in movies. I thought maybe you could um, do an episode of Policewoman. I can just see us together. Pepper and Schlepper. <laughs> we'd have the script tailored just, you know, for your image and talent. We'd have the scene where you'd jump out of the car and you'd say, okay, up against the fender and I'm going to frisk you from head to toe and I, oh, I hope it's me. <laughs> And then we'd have the dramatic scene where you'd, you'd come to me and you'd say, Pepper, I'm quitting the force. And I'd say, why, Dean? Why? Why? <laughs> and you'd say, they just gave me orders to go down to a back alley and take a pint away from a wino. <laughs> you see, to Dean, that's police brutality. <laughs> and, and then we'd get back in... The, to our patrol car after I'd persuade you to stay on the force. And we'd go to a neighborhood filled with people doing dangerous, unpredictable things. My, I, my jaws are so tired. <laughs> hey, this isn't a dentist show. Just do your act and get off. <laughs> well, that's the idea. Now do your job. I'm wondering, Dean. Let's get back in the alley. <laughs> champions of champions, and he will go down in history. I say that from my heart. The great champion, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Mr. Dean Martin, looking at you reassures me that when God created you, he had a sense of humor. I would like to give you some advice. Some good advice. I'm just, not... Just don't give me your right. That's not... <laughs> the man who has no imagination stands on the earth. He has no wings. He cannot fly. Is that too heavy for you? <laughs> Let's see. How will Coast sell everybody? You have an imagination, I'm sure. Why is it that I'm the most famous, the most successful, the greatest fight of all times? Because I have an imagination. You have an imagination. You have a gimmick. You act like you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing about, Cosell? Don't open your mouth to me. <laughs> Cosell, you, I mean, this is not your show. I'd have made you famous enough. <laughs> you all over the world. So everywhere I go, you follow me to get publicity. Every time I want to show, you come. You follow me all around. So we don't want to. Why did you invite him? <laughs> so let me tell you something else. <laughs> Who's going to tell the... him when it's over? <laughs> Are you telling me the truth? No, this man <laughs> Dumb as you look, boy. <laughs> you should be my manager. Wouldn't it be a heck of a combination if he was my manager? <laughs> you don't steal, do you? No, no, no way, Muhammad. Unless you say so. <laughs> I do. Well, why, that, do you, why, do you, why do you talk like that? Well, that's you just can, a why you, this was, you can still talk like you're supposed to talk. I know. But now, if you met an Italian, do you talk in Italian? No, no, I never talk in front of them. I tap them.
Sidney Stewart, like the world knows, you know, since, since I was a kid, as I said to him in the dressing room, I said, when I was nine, Jimmy, I saw you in your last movie, you know, and they lifted him up. <laughs> they lifted him up out of his makeup chair, and he went, ah, uh, really? <laughs> but we kid about Jimmy Stewart. Why? Because he's a great star. He's Hollywood. He knew all the greats. Clark Gable, uh, Hans Hall, Leo Gorsi. <laughs> John Payne's aunt. <laughs> he just came back from England where he starred in Harvey. He came here, right from England, to be with Dean. Jimmy should be put in the home. <laughs> Guy gets off a plane and comes right here to be with this Charlie Bomb Juice here. <laughs> you gotta belong in a home. Let's face it. I said, Jimmy, why are you here? I don't really know. <laughs> I'm delighted to share the dais uh, with a man who's being honored, uh, Dean Martin, by his dear buddy, one of the greats, Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> I, 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 thank you. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just sitting there, I, uh, watching you up here, it reminded me of a picture I did not very long ago, and it had the same kind of, of warmth. And, and, <laughs> and gentility, and, and uh, the picture is called The Man Who Shot Liberty Ballard. <laughs> what we're, we're really here, we're really here to pay our respects and pay tribute to Dean Martin, and I'm sure Dean will remember this occasion the rest of his life. Uh, it's too bad he won't remember it tonight. <laughs> I have to say about Dean, he, he knows how to relax. I remember uh, we did a picture together called Bandolero several years ago, and Dean was forced to jump off a three-story building, and uh, he was forced to do it. And, and right in the middle of it, he, he fell asleep. <laughs> well, we, we had a lot of fun in the picture. We, every day we practiced shooting by lining up a dozen bottles on the fence. And before I had a chance to get my gun out of the holster, I Dean drank the target. <laughs> I've got something to tell you a little more serious than that, because I, and I want to do it at this time. I, on that same picture, uh, Dean saved me from drowning. As a matter of fact, he, he saved my life. It was, uh, we were doing this scene, and we were crossing a river, and I fell off my horse, and, and Dean rescued me, and pulled me to shore, and gave me mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. And, you know, it, 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 you, you, you can't imagine what effect mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation from Dean Martin can have on I was going back to my hotel room to learn my lines and study the scene for the next day, and all of a sudden I said to myself, oh, to heck with it. I, I'll just show up when the cameras start and read it off the cue cards. And then the next day, I, during lunch break, I, without knowing it, I found myself in a phone booth calling a gold digger. <laughs> Would you believe it? I, I ended up with Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis. We were on our way to Acapulco. They were having a big blast down there. <laughs> so, Dean, if, if, if it's okay with you, will you, the next time you see me drowned, and just, just leave me there. <laughs> Uh, a brand
bright new star and a dear friend to Dean and to all of us, Mr. Uh, Gabe Kaplan. A lot of people tonight have made jokes about Dean's drinking, and I think all these jokes about Dean's drinking have gotten out of hand. I mean, people talk so much about Dean's drinking, they forget his other vices. <laughs> So, he has so many vices that AA wouldn't take him. He had to join EA. Everything's anonymous. <laughs> it's not that Dean drinks. It's what he does when he drinks. I mean, asking Kate Smith to go to Hawaii for the weekend. <laughs> Going to an orthopedic hospital and singing Breaking Up is Hard to Do. <laughs> I mean, I've heard of guys having blackouts, but Dean can't remember anything that happened between the years 67 to 71. <laughs> but Dean likes sports and he likes to drink, so I am going to enter Dean in the first annual Drunks Olympics. Yes, they're going to have events like the wino pole vault. <laughs> they set the bar at six inches. <laughs> Another event is the hop, skip, and bar. <laughs> Then they have the decathlon. <laughs> Ten drunks trying to find their cars. <laughs> They're beautiful. Aren't they? Ladies and gentlemen, one of the all-time greats, that's the biggest word I can say, one of the all-time greats, and a man that Mr. Martin cherishes and everyone on this day is. Ladies and gentlemen, the great man himself, Mr. Gene Kelly. Well, I'm, I'm very pleased I could be here to honor my old buddy, Dean, because actually, we met many years ago through Frank Sinatra, and that's the truth. At that time, Frank and I were doing an MGM musical called Anchors Away. It was all about two sailors trying to win World War II by singing, tap dancing, and begging Jose and Turby to play the piano. <laughs> well, it must have won. We won. <laughs> That's what he told me. He had a new friend in town, Dean Martin, <laughs> also known as a Steubenville slosher. <laughs> and that they were partying it up every night at Dean's favorite Italian restaurant. Frank was nice enough to invite me to come along. When I walked into the place, I got my first inkling that it was uh, not one of your Duncan Hines approved restaurants. A hat check girl wouldn't let me in unless I checked my hands, which I did. <laughs> yeah, you don't say no to a hat check girl named Bruno. <laughs> Dean, it's been great knowing you all these years. You're my kind of guy. You really are. You put your cards on the table and yourself under it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, a man that uh, we all respect and love, Democrat or Republican. He's the former senator from Minnesota. He is the distinguished senator from Minnesota. He will be the former senator from Minnesota. <laughs> Not Minnesota, it's Minnesota. Minnesota. Not Minnesota. <laughs> Giving me diction lessons. <laughs> Two dummies telling each other how to say it. Minnesota. Okay, fine. <laughs> A great man, and I am delighted that he's here for Dean. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, the great senator, Mr. Hubert Humphrey. <laughs> Thank 
you, uh, thank you, Don. Barry, I accept the nomination. <laughs> Thank you for a rabble-rousing introduction. I've been here just literally fascinated uh, watching you MC uh, this uh, prestigious affair, and I'm amazed at your tireless ability to talk, talk, talk. <laughs> How good it is to be here with my friend and colleague, uh, Barry Goldwater. You know, we, we do have very much in common. We both ran for president. We were both defeated. And neither one of us can recognize former vice presidential candidate William Miller unless he holds up this American Express card. <laughs> but Dean, as I uh, sat here and listened to your friends talk about you, I was amazed. Really, I've never heard such scurrilous things being said about anyone who uh, wasn't running for office. <laughs> land may wonder what a politician is doing on a show business roast, uh, but why not? The fine line between show business and politics is getting finer all the time. In fact, one of our distinguished opponents from the other side, as you know, is a former actor. I don't want to mention his name because according to the equal time rule, if I do, I'll have to mention the names of every other candidate and we would be here till way after the 11 o'clock news just with the Democrats alone. <laughs> now tonight in 1976, our bicentennial year, we have come to honor Dean Martin as the man of the hour. But I believe that Dean could have been the man of any hour in our nation's glorious history. Why can't you just see Dean at the very birth of our nation you know, the Revolutionary War. He may not have fired the shot heard round the world, but he would have drunk it. And you know. <laughs> At the Battle of Bunker Hill, when the British were attacking, I can just hear Dean electrifying the colonists with his immortal cry, don't fire till you see the reds of their eyes. <laughs> Paul Revere rode through Middlesex County at midnight, waking up the revolutionary soldiers, sending them from their warm beds to the battlefield. Dean would have followed up, riding from door to door, unselfishly comforting the lonely wives. <laughs> Dean is modest about his patriotism, but uh, his pretended ignorance of American history is a sham. I know for a fact that he remembers and relives the Whiskey Rebellion. <laughs> it occurs to me, Dean, that you probably are related to, to the original discoverer of America. He too was an Italian. When he started out, he didn't know where he was going. He didn't know where he was when he arrived. And he didn't know where he had been when he got home. <laughs> So we're here to pay tribute to this one man for all seasons. Now, despite the fact that members of this dais come from different walks of life, and we do, with varied political philosophies, but isn't that the American way? Here I am from the Democratic Party, Barry Goldwater from the Republican Party, and we're both here to honor Dean Martin, who is in favor of a third party, or a fourth party, or a fifth party, or any party, as long as the ice holds out. Yeah, try to sit up. Sit up, sit up, sit up. You start to fall asleep, then Jimmy right away leans back, and then we got a lot of trouble. <laughs> You bit, when I blow the whistle, move up to. <laughs> hey, this is, look, look, look at the elderly lady who's going out of way. Look, Harold. <laughs> Nobody's looking at you, lady. Forget about it. 
except for our boat is lonely. <laughs> we don't look at an old lady. <laughs> you're never old, darling. It's what you feel in your heart. Do you fool around at all? <laughs> the man who probably knows Dean Martin better than anyone else is his television producer for the past 12 years. In order to handle talent like Dean, a producer has to be strong, vigorous, and forceful. Well, here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Dean's longtime producer, the dynamic, rugged, Gary Von Grexen. Thank you, Mr. Rickles. As you say, I've been Dean mm. Martin's television producer for 12 years. <laughs> and the first thing I'd like to do tonight is to say uh, hello to him. <laughs> well, well, which one is he? <laughs> you ruined me. Uh, <laughs> you broke my heart. You destroyed my uh, house. <laughs> Look, you made me a nervous... Uh, <laughs> nervous uh, wreck. See this? Before I met you, I, I used to be like uh, this. <laughs> he could drive you crazy with those cue cards. He could cheer you harder. Can you read that? Huh? <laughs> He can. <laughs> it says, hi, I'm uh, Dean Martin. <laughs> down. Hey, folks. Now it's my pleasure to introduce the great John Wayne. Duke, it's all over. How long can you ride into the sunset? It's murder when they got to give you a chair and boost you onto the horse. <laughs> but you're a great man. Marion Morris. I guess years ago you dressed up and mixed. <laughs> but, Duke, that's what all your friends call you, too. I call you Mr. Annoying. <laughs> Important man. A man that made the West and all of us live in a great, wonderful, wonderful Walter Mitty world. One of the great giants of the motion picture screen, Mr. John Wayne, better known as Duke, to his buddies. Thank you, children. As soon as I figure out what you said, I think I'm going to get sore. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's nice being here, and I hope you don't mind the way I walked out. It's just my impression of Rich Little. <laughs> well, hello, old timer. Wait a minute, what happened? You must have crammed in a lot of living since our last picture. I got a 60-year-old saddle that looks better than you do. <laughs> I feel kind of close to this wrinkled old wrangler. Because Howard Hawks and I sort of broke him into westerns. Before that, he'd made a lot of musical junk, you know, kissing girls, guys leaping all over, singing and dancing, fancy costumes, you know, that red silk handkerchief. Well, the first time he showed up on the set, Rio Bravo, he was decked out all right in authentic cowboy outfit. But he had that red silk handkerchief hanging out of his holster. <laughs> I pointed out to him that his pretty jingling silver spurs sounded musical, but that he had them on backwards. <laughs> Incidentally, partner, that Garanga Motel says you still owe him $200 for the ripped sheets. <laughs> the cocktail waitress figures that nine dollars ought to about do for the pantyhose. 
This by Santa here is some kind of an actor, I'll tell you that. In fact, Dean, I really wanted you to co-star with me in my last picture. Part called for a brave, rough, tough, brawling sidekick. I figured you were perfect. The studio insisted on Katie Hepburn. <laughs> so when you take in Rooster Cogburn, see all those love scenes, Dino. Remember, it was supposed to be you and me. <laughs> Well, enough of this buffalo butter, enough jokes. I'd be a liar if I didn't tell you that I love this Lush. He's been my friend for the best years of my life. He's done for me what he's done for millions of people all over the world because, like so many of you, I feel good every time I see him. I'm entertained by him. I laugh with him as well as at him. And when I leave him, I worry that he'll find his way home. <laughs> Dino, to you, may you live forever. And I say this from the bottom of my heart. May you live forever. And may the last voice you hear be mine. To you, Pilgrim. Hey gang, it's movie time. In the last three years, a lot of big stars have appeared on Dean's Road. And even though they couldn't be here tonight, we wanted you to see their touching tribute to Dean. I've been watching you on TV for years. A lot of years. <laughs> I heard all those stories about the way you booze it up. I just want to tell you, if you fall down tonight, I know picking you up because it's not my job. <laughs> Look at Dino. He don't know where the hell he is. <laughs> Happy, smiling, relaxed. He still thinks he's on every week. I just love his hand, and I really wish he wouldn't drink so much. And Dean claims he only drinks when he smokes. Right now he's up to eight cartons a day. <laughs> now I think you're actually about to see a television first. Dean accidentally drank a glass of water, and he's going to self-destruct in five seconds. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Martin, and may I say it is very gratifying indeed to see one of my patients doing so well. <laughs> this virtuosity, this... that his drinking might set a bad example for his many viewers. <laughs> After only one consultation, he vowed that he... This is what he said to me. He said, no more drinking on the air. And this is what he did. He would take his tuxedo and dip it in booze, and then from time to time, he would just suck his sleeve. As you can see, nothing upsets him. No nothing upsets him. Although the energy crisis had him worried, he heard they might limit the public to two gallons a day, and he thought they were talking about booze. You know, I know he said that I am his good friend, but I think he's gotten mixed up with somebody else, because when I came in here tonight, he said, uh, Hi, Ernest. How's Julio? <laughs> no, you, couldn't, you said I couldn't say any drunk jokes about no, him. I know. No, I laid off. Off. Hasty to lay off that stuff. It's, it's ungentlemanly. It's unsporting. It's not fair to make fun of an unfortunate individual who's the victim of an affliction, the demon rum. <laughs> Excessive libation is a serious problem. I'm sure Dean will drink to that, huh? Well, Dean's got so many grapes in him, he's being picketed by Cesar Chavez. <laughs> but this might easily be the biggest moment of my life because standing up here on this day is with Dean Martin, the wino, on one side of me. And... Michael Landon, the milk drinker, on the other side of me. While he's fermenting, he's curdling. You don't remember me, but I was your first wife. Oh. I don't mind the jokes about my size, Dean. At least they measure my weight in pounds. Yours is in quartz. You know, uh, I've always liked Dean Martin because he did a nice thing for me one time. 
After one of my jumps, I was in the hospital and he uh, donated a pint of his blood in my name. There was one problem. I was a little young then and they won't let anybody under 21 have it. <laughs> well, I'm going to say something about you, pal. You and I have simpatico. Dean and I have been on more floors than Johnson's wax. <laughs> Tonight, absolutely thrilled witnessing this remarkable sight. Gleason being roasted and Dean's already stewed. <laughs> nice to find a person of your heritage sitting up. Great night for you, Dean. Cool. They don't know. He's sitting here nude. <laughs> he just put a tuxedo on the front part and the bottom. He's all nude and he's in a therapy pool. <laughs> Look at this, Bob Hope went. <laughs> He's looking for oil. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet a man uh, who is my dear friend. He is fooling around with my wife. <laughs> Joey Bishop is a fun guy. He's the kind of guy, when you have a loss in the family, bring him as a mourner. Uh, he doesn't have to know who they are. He just sits by the cash and goes, hey, it's a damn shame. <laughs> he knows Frank Sinatra personally, and when they had the clan, Dean and uh, Frank and Peter Lawford, I wasn't in that group, but uh, Joey was, and he used to run in front of Frank's car and check for grenades. <laughs> By all of us. He is a great star and a friend to Dean and to all of us, Mr. Joey Bishop. <laughs> We're delighted to see Bob Hope here. Thank God it means we're not at war. <laughs> Didn't you be in Angola? I've known Dean for many years, and I consider it a non and a privilege to have been associated with and know Dean. People say, uh, does he drink? Some people say, no, you know, he pretends. One night he pretended so well, it took three guys to carry him home. <laughs> he does not pretend. Dean Martin drinks. Don't let anybody say any different. I saw him one night walking around with a snake in his hand trying to kill a stick. Live until you have seen Dean Martin in a drunken stupor whistling for his dog. Here, voice. I cannot believe that we are here tonight honoring a guy who a few feet away from us cannot see us or hear us. I'm so happy to see Senator Humphrey here, but there's something I, I meant to bring up. I, I hope, Senator, you realize I do this with a great deal of respect, and I hope you will not be embarrassed by it. But about eight or nine years ago, we were both in Philadelphia. We shared a cab. You wished to pay the cab fare, but you had no money with you. And I want, offered to pay the cab fare, and you said, no, 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 just loan me $10 and let me pay the cab fare. Do you remember the incident in Philadelphia? Okay. You have no lines, just nod. <laughs> so I, I could have asked him for the 10 bucks, but I says, no. Hey, maybe one day he'll be president of the United States, and I can very proudly say, the president of the United States owes me $10. Now what I'd like to say is, if you don't think you're going to make it this time, I'd like to have the $10. <laughs> give this to Goldwater because I bet him that he would win. <laughs> the 
We'll now uh, take a moment of silence while I introduce uh, this fine gentleman, Rich Little. He's the best impressionist in the world. This I know because he's told me this time and time again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rich Little. Why, why am I thanking Don Rickles? What has this dummy ever done for me? Oh, yeah, gave me a minute in his dressing room once, told me he was a big star, gave me a cookie, and told me to go away. <laughs> I'm rolling, I'm rolling. Oh, my, my. Yeah, am, I go am I going too fast for you, Don? <laughs> why don't we put a cord on you, Nabel, and float you out here as the good year blimp? There's, uh, there's Gene Kelly. And you know why Gene Kelly stayed so young through the years? His voice never changed. <laughs> there's Orson Welles, the wings of man. And John Wayne here tonight. Yo. <laughs> Howard Kelsell, a man who was slowly becoming a legend in his own mind. <laughs> then, of course, Hubert Humphrey is Hubert. I'm pleased as Hans Humphrey is here. <laughs> I was saying to my wife, Muriel, just the other day, I said, Muriel, and she said, that's right. <laughs> Don the, uh, uh, Jim, Jim, Jimmy Stewart, I, I, uh, 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 Paul Lynn was here. <laughs> oh, I think Miss Rouse does disgust. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are proud and honored to present Dean Martin's first partner, Gladys Lewis. Found 
tonight. And even though you married somebody else, I want the whole world to know our engagement is off. <laughs> a wonderful, uh, wonderful friend. Uh, this fine young gentleman became a star overnight. Uh, he's become magic. He really has. He's a fine uh, Tony Orlando and Dawn just have skyrocketed to fame. I was backstage before and I said, Tony, how do you feel? And he said, I'm skyrocketing. <laughs> he's a Greek and uh, has Puerto Rican blood and it's a mixture and when he's born, he came out as an olive. <laughs> wonderful young star, Mr. Tony Orlando. Actually, after watching you here tonight, Don, I realized I made a mistake in one of my songs. I should have called it Tie a Yellow Ribbon Round Don Rickles' Tongue. <laughs> Ten years ago, I tried to sell a song to you, Dean. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, I remember when I went to NBC and uh, pulled in the parking space next to yours. I knew it was yours because yours was the only one on a slant. <laughs> you suggested we talk at your house, so I followed you home. You're amazing, Dean Martin, you're amazing. Mulholland Drive has 500 curves and you did it in one straight line. <laughs> like very much to pay tribute to you because after all you were the light you were the one that when I first saw you that I said to myself yes I want to be an entertainer and I can't I can't find a way to uh, express my thanks and I hope this is proper tonight in its roasting tradition to pay tribute to you this way I'd like to pass on to you a piece of advice that Dean has given me he said prior to going on your show Tony remember three things one be considerate to your audience Two, be kind to them. Three, be drunk. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Every time I see George Durango on the Mary Tyler Moore show, uh, I can't get over her sweet and uh, gentle way. She's a girl who wouldn't hurt a fly. Uh, she tried to talk it into committing suicide, but she wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a girl who is so considerate, if you would, she carries extra credit cards for purse snatches. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Georgia Rankin. Well, once again, it's time for some more of those hard-hitting zingers the producer gave me to say about the stars here on the day. I hope I don't hurt anybody's feelings, but here come the clouds, the put-down stick, and a couple of rim shot hits. ba dum ba dum <laughs> I'm glad to see Bob Hope on the dais. Bob misses entertaining servicemen so much, he bought his own war. <laughs> to say that, Mr. Hope. I know how you feel about our men in uniform. I saw you earlier today doing a monologue for three bellhops. <laughs> it's a privilege seeing Orson Welles here tonight. He's such a great actor. They say he used to chew up the scenery. And when you look at him, it's pretty obvious he did. <laughs> 
I'm glad to see Don Rickles here. I hope the network doesn't see him, or they'll cancel this show, too. <laughs> and now we come to our guest of honor, Dean Martin. Oh, uh, I hear that Dean was found this morning with his bed on fire. He said, don't blame me, it was on fire when I got in. <laughs> this morning and you were exactly where you were last night on the floor in the lobby <laughs> I hope I didn't say anything bad about anybody and that's it for the singer <laughs> thank you Georgia there she goes the ticker bell of the hell's angels <laughs> Here's a guy uh, those of us in comedy really respect. Uh, get ready, Nipsey. It's either that or we both take the train to Baltimore. <laughs> He's a real pro and a superb monologist. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nipsey Russell. He went to see a doctor for a checkup. Doesn't he look great? The doctor said he said the best thing for any man's health is to give up women, give up whiskey, and give up staying out at night. Dean said, Doc, I don't deserve the best. What's the next best? <laughs> I'm overwhelmed by his vitality and his dynamism and his youthful appearance. I said to him, Dean, what is the secret? How do you look young? He said, the best way to look young is to hang out with old people. <laughs> some profound social topics. I asked him, I said, Dean, do you think black children should be bused to white schools? He said, hell no, let them take a cab. <laughs> I said, but it's always sex and drinking and carousing. I said, don't you know what good, clean fun is? He said, no, what good is it? <laughs> he has a very weird sense of humor. He takes pornographic film home and runs it backwards. He likes to see people get dressed and leave. <laughs> so I say, Dean, drunk or sober, rich or poor, cloudy or fair weather, I'll stand beside Dean Martin because we Sicilians stick together. <laughs> talked much about Dean Martin's past tonight. One element which hasn't been touched upon is the fact that in his formative years, he was a member of the Boy Scouts. We are proud to have with us tonight the leader who helped form our man of the hour, his scoutmaster from Steubenville, Ohio, Mr. Foster Brooks. This boring ball buffoon just told you I was I was Dean Scott Scott Master in, in Ohio in, in Stupidville. And I'm here at the MGM Grand Hotel tonight to 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 I'm here to salute salute this bomb is past. My bosom <laughs> my bo my bo bosom swells with pride. Something Ru Ruth Buzzy might even end it. <laughs> you may like like it look. Look, you may look. <laughs> you may you may look at me and say, "Push her, tish part, part tish." <laughs> easy for you to say. <laughs> I remember when, when this piffle pixie was a, was a cub scout. Oh, oh. 
the happy hours we spend of a summer evening sitting around a campfire in our little short pants, roasting our weenies. <laughs> of course, warming our buns. <laughs> Dean, Dean, Dean's dream was to be a great singer. <laughs> Mine was to be a great brain surgeon. <laughs> Sorry, your dream wasn't fulfilled. <laughs> this Latin log could have been a gifted su surgeon. He was the first scout to perform an emergency vasectomy. <laughs> on a great, on a great horny owl. <laughs> To this day, that owl is looking for you, Dean. <laughs> you just walk through any, any Steubenville woods, and you hear that bird singing pitifully. <laughs> in conclude, in conclude. <laughs> As I leave you, <laughs> you may ask why all these nice people on this dais have given of their time and traveled many miles to, to honor Dean, Dean Martin. As I said before, it's a dirty job that somebody's got to do it. <laughs> I'd like to meet a man who I've known for many, many years. This man has been doing fights since Joe Lewis fought Johnny Paycheck. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, we make fun of Howard Cosell, and why not? Look at him. <laughs> this man has a fantastic nose. When the wind is right, he becomes a hawk. <laughs> With that nose, every time he breathes, he sucks up his underwear. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the all-time sportscasters, Mr. Howard Cosell. It's such a sweet little thing, Don. They talk about charm schools in my name. Thank God you're the only guy who's got more cancellations on your record than I have on mine. <laughs> could have been served during this hour than glorifying the Sicilian sponge, <laughs> the staggering power of pizza, this fugitive from the planet of the grapes. <laughs> we could have used this valuable television time to do a one-hour special on the wit and wisdom of Art Buckwall or a one-minute special on the wit and wisdom of Sonny Bono. <laughs> so perhaps I am remiss in denying Dean this hour of immortality, because this is the bicentennial year, and Dean has a special way of touching the hearts of all Americans. Maybe he didn't say the memorable words, give me liberty or give me death, or I regret that I have but one life to give to my country. But did Patrick Henry or Nathan Hale ever say words so stirring as, when the moon hits a yaw, I like a big pizza pie. That's the Dino, baby, after that, whatever you can't you deserve. I'd like to have you meet a great 
comedy team, uh, two guys that have never talked to each other. You remember that, Dean? <laughs> but these two dear friends of mine have been making America laugh for over 25 years. That's a long time, and I think they ought to give it up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my friends, dear ones they are, and certainly Dean's, Dan Rowan and Dick Martin. You're pretty excited about being here tonight, aren't you? I certainly can. Hey, and uh, Don's doing a very creditable job, isn't he? I think he always does. You know, Don Rickles always reminds me of a blindfolded massage lady. A blindfolded massage lady? You never know where she's going to strike next. <laughs> well, he's always good for a laugh or two, though. Well, so is the massage lady. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's certainly a tribute to the guest of honor that this dais is graced with the presence of two men, who both of whom have run for the nation's highest office. Right. Hubert Humphrey and John Wayne. <laughs> John Wayne has never run for president. Well, neither has Gerald Ford. <laughs> <laughs> Enough about politicians. Yes, even so. Yeah, the even, 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 even though. Even. We are here tonight <laughs> yeah. to pay our respects to one of the funniest and most lovable television personalities in the world. Right. Henny Youngman. <laughs> I suppose you think that's funny. No, but he sends me a case of booze every time I mention his name on prime time. <laughs> <laughs> Henny Youngman, I just got you a case. Oh, thank you very much. I think it's time we spoke about the man America honors tonight, your friend and mine, Dean Martin. Yeah, I love old Dean. Yeah. You know, Dean was the man, a lot of people don't know this, but Dean was the man who put Rowan and Martin on NBC in the program that was later to become Laugh-In. Yes. And we shall be eternally grateful to him for that. Yes, I love the very ground he falls on. <laughs> don't, I don't intend to stand up here and do dumb, drunk jokes about this guy. I happen to know that Dean is one of the most charitable men in all of show business. Well, last year alone, he took in 14 wayward girls and gave them a place to sleep. All right, what about all he gives every year to the sons of Italy? Right, last year alone, he gave them 14 more sons. <laughs> well, let's be fair right now for a moment. Talk a little bit about Dean's accomplishments in our industry. Personal appearances, sold out wherever he appears. Over 18 gold records. Not to mention television. Television. I told you not to mention it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> television. He's been doing a variety show on television for 12 years. Nobody else can say that. Oh, how about Howard Cosell? Howard Cosell's variety show lasted a few weeks. Well, it seemed like 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> There's another thing. This man, Dean, has made a lot of people proud to be Italian. Well, that wasn't too tough after Mussolini, though. <laughs> <laughs> realize that if everyone, the, the number of people who have seen him, he's so familiar to the yeah. world, if everyone who watches Dean on television had voted for Senator Goldwater in 1964 and had voted for Senator Humphrey in 1968, both of these men would have slept in the White House. Huh. Then Susan Ford would really have something to tell her old lady. <laughs> I think the time has come to stop filing around and tell this fellow what you really think about him. Well, Dean, you're the best. You're a great entertainer, a loyal friend, and one hell of a guy. And that goes for both of us, yeah. Dean. Say goodnight, Dick. Good night, Dick. Good night, Dick. Good night, Dick. Good night, Dick. <laughs> Good night. I would like to say to you, Bob, because we cannot kid about it. I've never liked you. <laughs> annoyed me. I don't see how you became a star. Gene Kelly always said to me, how did he become a star? Gene, tell him what you said to me. <laughs> many, many years ago, he gave me a break on a television show with, with hair, with this, not you, not you, not you. Not you. <laughs> I'll let you know when. But it's good that you practice standing. Later on, we're going to have you walking and talking and mixing with people. You're going to have such a good time. <laughs> America loves him. He knows Johnny Carson personally. 
He has uh, traveled all over the world. Uh, he's home now for a half hour to pick up his laundry, and we just asked him off the street to come on in and kill an hour. <laughs> but Bob, you've done so much. In World War II, which I was in, and you came to the front, and I had to go and attack the Japanese troops at that time. And you said, I've done my jokes, and you went to the back lines. I, I was so annoyed. <laughs> I don't care how big you are. I'm fed up with you, Bob. But I'll give you $100 if you'll marry my mother. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there is nobody, there is nobody greater. I was in World War II. I never saw you. <laughs> I never saw you. Of course you didn't. They faced you the wrong way. proud to be his friend, and certainly Mr. Martin is a dear friend of this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, a great guy, and that's what you can say about him, Mr. Bob Hope. I'd be delighted to be here at these auditions. <laughs> but television is wonderful to do this. And television needs another Dean Martin roast like the CIA needs a press agent. <laughs> but this is a great night. This night is about as exciting as watching the Walton family paper train their pet rock. <laughs> been this excited since John Davidson let me fill his dimples with whipped cream. <laughs> and how about this MGM Grand Hotel, huh? What mobs are? The crowds around the crap table are 12 deep. The only place in the world where you have to make an appointment to go broke. <laughs> and what room service? 24 hours a day you can get anything you want sent up to your room, unless your wife is with you. <laughs> And I really had fun playing the slot machines here. It's nice seeing three oranges come up and not have Crosby force his kids to eat them. <laughs> what a super hotel. Dean has his own helicopter landing area, and he doesn't have a helicopter. <laughs> and it's nice to see Senator Goldwater in such distinguished company. <laughs> Distinguished company. I've seen better bodies blown out of the Hindenburg. <laughs> Just think, Senator, you could have been at the White House watching home movies of Betty Ford doing the hustle with Mao Tse Tung. <laughs> now that everybody's running for president, why not our distinguished host? Dean's very popular. He has thousands of warm friends and some men friends, too. <laughs> And what a vote-getter. Most candidates lean toward the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. Dean's the only candidate who can lean toward all parties at once. <laughs> who can win some of the crucial primaries. Dean has a wide acquaintance in Florida, Jackie Gleason. And we all know how to... <laughs> we all know how fair-minded Dean is on foreign policy. French, German, Italian, Irish, Scotch. He'll drink it no matter where it's from. <laughs> I think Dean would breathe some new life into the administration. It should be easy for him. His breath would start the windmill turning on an old Dutch painting. <laughs> Dean has always made news. Even as a kid, he made medical history. He was the first seven-year-old to have a liver transplant. <laughs> Yes, he's been drinking since he was seven. His family didn't know he drank until one day they saw him sucking on a popsicle with an olive in it. <laughs> but I'm proud of him. He's from Ohio. And let me tell you, growing up in Steubenville wasn't easy. There were some pretty tough characters in Steubenville. Their idea of underarm protection was a 38 in a shoulder holster. 
<laughs> Dean got his start in show business singing with a Sammy Watkins band in Cleveland. He got $7 a night, nine when he didn't show up. <laughs> in those days, Dean sang all the pop songs, but now all Dean sings is country and western. And let me tell you, Dean singing country and western makes as much sense as Greg Allman giving Sonny Bono a welcome home party. <laughs> Dean was in the Rat Pack. Those were the happiest days of Dean's life. Constantly surrounded by three guys who could carry you home. <laughs> no, it was Frank who got Dean to join the Rat Pack. It was a private little in-group. Frank, Dean, Sammy Davis, Joey Bishop, and Peter Lawford. They made Las Vegas what it is today. The off-ramp between Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> Dean is one of America's great sex symbols. He's sort of a marinated Burt Reynolds. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend.